Okay, so you should all be able to see my screen. And so here's the good news, right? Of course, you've got your list of donors. Yay! Thank you so much. And uh, to United Workers, they're the folks who are doing the distribution of the checks and your donor list. And you should have gotten um, the distribution. Distribution um, comes at least in three waves for some of you. Um, the biggest um, check and list of donors you should have received already. Um, and if not, soon, if you not, then you'll receive it soon. And um, some of you will anticipate that you might see um, a second or even a third round. They'll be much smaller if that happens. But what happens with the state is that as they're processing PFDs and eligible people to get their PFDs, they're also simultaneously processing whether that person can need to make a charitable donation. And if they do, um, sometimes that process takes a little while to unfold. So for now, you have the bulk, hopefully you have the bulk of their names. And um, if you, and you should have gotten that roughly um, late last week or early this week. So this is a great time. Right now uh, is a great time to be thinking about how you're going to thank your donors. Um, and if you haven't touched that list yet, um, please pick it up and do something with it today. Don't let Monday come around uh, without having done something in your organization. So I have provided to you a few ideas around some quick actions. Um, you know, we have some, some rules in recognition. One is thank before you bank. So you've probably all uh, deposited that check. So we really want you to start to think about how you're thanking those donors. Those of you who have existing um, uh, recognition plans, um, certainly integrating pick click give donors into that recognition plan is, is the quickest way to, to move forward. And some of you are also creating additional ways. So um, just thinking through that right now is super important. I've just given you some quick ideas or quick actions around the formal and the informal. For some of you, that formal approach is just going to take some time. Um, and so you can go for the informal, and that's fine. The idea, you know, recognition ultimately builds trust. It lets the donor know that you have received the gift and that you are starting to put it um, right into the organization. I often say money goes through you and not to you. So it isn't that they're giving it to your organization, they're giving it directly into mission and the work that you do. So helping communicate to donors that you have received their gift and that you are putting it to good use is so incredibly important. It builds trust. It's a great way to communicate. It builds accountability. And ultimately, the reason that we do, um, the, the other reason that we do recognition is because it better connects donors to our mission. So many of our pick, pick click give donors are new donors to us. And so your job is to start to um, build that, that relationship and build that base of, of conversation with your donors. Um, about the thing that they care about, which is the mission of the, and the work of your organization. Um, for those of you um, who are um, thinking about kind of who are these people, I mean, absolutely, I want you to spend some time um, comparing them to the database you already have, what about them, um, what, how can you better learn about them, or how many of them are new to you, how many of them are returning donors to you, um, how many of them use Pick, Click, Give as an opportunity um, to um, increase their gift uh, and so make an additional gift to you? I'll re remind all of us that Pick, Click, Give really has three goals. The first goal is to, uh, is to increase the number of people who are, who are making philanthropic gifts in Alaska. The second goal is to increase the amount of those gifts. So more people, more money. And the third is to raise the level of awareness about the power of individual philanthropy in the state of Alaska, that notion that when we all um, give to the things that we care about, we make our community a better place. I always like to um, say, right, philanthropy at its core means love of humankind. And we, have, uh, we show our love of humankind in many ways. And one of those ways um, is with our contributions. And so, um, this is just a vehicle to, for people to show, uh, show the, about the things that they truly love. And it's our job in recognition to help them reconnect to that and feel that experience. For some of you, this is a great space to get your board involved um, and other staff. 
it's not just your job. It's a, this is a team sport. So how do you get your board involved in recognition? How do you get them involved in learning about who's on that list? Um, what you know? How do you get others involved in your team? Um, don't just keep that list to yourself. Make sure you're you're sharing that list so that you can find out um, uh, what what you need to know about the people on that list. And then, of course, you know what's next. Are you thinking about um, what your what what the long-term strategies are? So these are some great quick action, but absolutely having some long-term conversation. Anybody that spends more than three minutes with Four Acre knows uh, we're interested in helping nonprofits really create relationship-based strategies in our in your fundraising. So really seeing this as a holistic approach in which we are on the relationship. And so while this class is on recognition. Um, there's certainly a whole cycle um, to this conversation. Um, in my opinion, recognition and my experience of raising money for the last 25 years in Alaska and beyond is that our the thing that makes the circle the thing that makes the circle go round and round, the thing that that helps us be in relationship um, in a, the most sincere way is our ability to do great recognition and reporting back to our donors. Um, so don't uh, you know this isn't just something nice to do. This is a critical piece of our conversation. You might notice um, on the side there's some percentages on, in, this, in this slide, and that really speaks to how much time you should be spending um, in each of these areas in order to really be relationship-based focused. So many of our organizations are overly focused in that request space um, and not enough time or energy put into the other spaces. Um, and we spend a whole bunch of time in all of our other uh, four acre classes um, talking about what does this cycle really look like. So if this is interesting to you, I encourage you to, to get connected with us about that. We are offering another pick, click, give class that um, speaks more to the relationship cycle as well. But ultimately, recognition here is about being both strategic uh, and consistent in your approach. So some guidelines for you um, to be thinking about as you're forming your recognition plan. Of course, the goal of recognition um, I said is right to connect the donors back to mission and the impact of their gift. Uh, remembering, right, that m this is never about money. This is always about the difference that the money makes. Organizations that are overly focused on the money have a really hard time raising money. Organizations that really remember that this is about relationships and about what the donor cares about, meaning mission and impact, um, do much better in this conversation. So using your recognition as a way to complete that circle for the donor, to weave back. And this should be really great news to organizations that um, you know, don't have a ton of internal capacity. Um, and what you really have to do is, uh, what you, where, where the opportunity really lies, is to take what you already are doing, your programs and services, your outreach, your communication, all the things that you're already doing, and figure out how you weave recognition into the things that you're already doing. You don't necessarily have to do new things. You just have to weave recognition into those things that you're already doing very, very um, strategically. There's that notion of a gift to you is really a gift through. And again, that it's really about um, the donor's connection to how, they're, um, how you're meeting needs out in the community. Um, one of the things I've um, been spending some time with our friends over at First Alaskans, and uh, one of the things that they say that it's just so powerful for me and um, a thought that you might carry into your own organization is that the shortest distance between two people is a story. And uh, certainly at Four Acre, we spent a, um, a whole leadership summit helping nonprofits think about how you tell a better story. Um, but I, I, I really believe um, that we could all be better at telling the story in a way that invites the donor to be part of that. So I say tell this compelling story with the donor, not at them, right? So much of our conversation often in our communication with donors is essentially kind of like, how am I great? How am I great? How am I great? Oh yeah, by the way, thanks for the money. And I really want you to try in some compelling ways to tell a story about the difference that your organization is making in a way that includes the donor and engages the donor in that conversation. You'll know if it's really working because what will happen is that the donor will start to tell their own story. It's just a very powerful moment. So again, um, thinking about how you um, say thanks both immediately and often. Again, there's those kind of best practice where we thank seven times in a year for a gift. 
some of you might be kind of rolling your eyes and thinking, oh my goodness, that's just too much. And maybe it is. Um, for you, and that's totally fine. What we would ask is that every thank you be um, be sincere, and remembering that only one of those thank yous is a formal thank you. So there's lots of other ways. Again, if you're using recognition, if you're weaving it into the things that you're already doing, that can include everything from an email to re recognizing someone when they come to a come to your space to recognizing them in the bread aisle at the grocery store for being a donor to you. So there's lots of ways that are very informal over the course of the year to, um, to say your thank yous. When we think about what might be a benefit to a donor when we're trying to map out our giving levels or our plan, one of the things to think about is what would be the benefit to the donor. Of course, they're giving to the thing that they already care about. That's the that's so important. But you have a lot of new donors in Pick Look Give who may not have that connection yet. And what we find when we're mapping out our recognition strategies is that donors, the bigger the donor or the more longevity of our donor, the more they want three things from us. And by the way, none of this is stuff, right? They don't need mugs and tote bags and stickers and all that stuff, although, you know, if that's part of who you are as an organization, you certainly can consider that. But I would not unnecessarily go out and spend money on those things. Instead, what we know to be true is that the donor, that as donors increase their commitments to us, either by time or by money, what we experience with them is that they want privileges that other people don't get, or they want them first. They want to be connected to mission first. Right? They want opportunities that other people don't get, or they want them first. And they want access to information or to people that other people don't get, or first. And if, so if we think about some examples here, for example, if you think about access to information or people, what that might mean is that your board members are signing thank you letters or picking up the phone and saying thank you. Maybe you're doing a thankathon and you have board members who are part of your thanking. Or opportunities might be if you have some um, some programming that's appropriate for, for for your donors to experience. Maybe they get an opportunity, they get a personal invitation from you to participate in something that's mission related. I often say, if you're going to do anything fun that's mission related in your organization, never go alone. Always put a donor on your arm and take them with you. Um, or subscribe to what I might call the invite and acknowledge strategy, inviting people to participate in mission and experience um, and uh, recognizing when they, when they, acknowledging when they, when they come or even if they don't come. It's the idea of being invited that really truly matters just added bonus when they actually show up. It is um, definitely part of the science of fundraising. Fundraising has a long history of science. There's a whole canon of literature and research that tells us what is successful and what is not so successful. I encourage, strongly encourage you to get connected to the science of fundraising. And part of that science of fundraising tells us that people are motivated by different giving levels, and that includes that recognition giving levels. And so just those of you who are thinking about your giving levels, you know, unless you're an Olympian team, you should do away with gold, silver, bronze. And unless you're um, a friends group, you might do away with the notion of, you know, friends, the friends kind of conversation of so kind of support levels. I really want you to think about what is meaningful to the, what's donor focused, what's mission related. Some of the most fun board meetings that you can, you can have are to brainstorm um, giving levels that are mission related. And what we say about these things is that they should be hierarchical but not insulting. Like, um, so for example, uh, if you're a bird organization, uh, you might, uh, you know, have, you know, the egg at uh, the basic level and an eagle at the top level and, and then every organization, of course, needs a good egg, right? So you could run a fun campaign that way. Or, a recognition campaign that way. Or if you're an, a water organization, you know, it's lovely to be a babbling brook. It's not so nice to be a muddy stream, right? So you want to definitely not be insulting when you think about um, these giving levels. But again, think of them as motivational tools. And I guarantee you people are looking at those levels and where they are in relation to others. Um, and, and so figuring out how you, how you name these things, how you name these levels. Maybe you already have giving levels, and you're integrating your pick click give donors into existing levels. Maybe you're giving a fun notation, uh, you know, giving those, maybe, you know, listing them in green so that you can, you know, go along with the, the color scheme of pick click give, or you're doing something to recognize that their gifts were made through pick click give. 
Um, maybe there's a fun way to integrate that into your existing structure, or maybe you're creating a separate structure. That's totally up to you, the idea is to do something that's absolutely manageable for you and beneficial to the donor. So the other thing to think about as you're plotting out your recognition plan is to think about, you know, some, for some of your organizations on this, on this call, it's not appropriate to have donors have a physical connection to missions. Either you've got some HIPAA rules in place or you just have, um, I know, for example, at Four Acre, like, I can't really have people kind of follow me around doing classes. That doesn't really make much sense. So I have to create emotional connection even when I can't create a physical connection. So thinking about how you use your stories um, to share that emotional connect, even if you can't share the physical part. And the goal here, of course, is to, again, engage donors in missions. So it's so incredibly important. So um, I just did a quick brainstorming list for you about some ways that you might see involvement as part of your recognition strategy. Um, and many of these not about the direct connection to mission, uh, because again, for some of you, that doesn't make any sense. Um, and for some of you, you know, all, you know, one of these ideas is going to ring true for you, and for others, you'll have a, a number of ideas. Um, and again, I just want to stress, use your existing strategies, use the existing tools in your toolbox. I'm not suggesting to you that you necessarily have to create brand new tools. But there's certainly ways to engage donors and use involvement as a, as a mechanism to say thank you. I, I'm a big believer that words matter. Um, and so um, I just think about you know, that first letter that you're about to send to your donors. The classic mistake that we see organizations making just time and time again in newsletters and thank you letters and asking letters, um, even in language around you know, celebrate, doing something that's celebratory, what often happens is that, um, and I'll over-dramatize this, but the idea is that we, we end up treating people like walking checkbooks so, or walking ATM machines. And so we say things like, our nonprofit is great, we do amazing things, our organization is incredible, we're changing the world, oh, thanks for the money, right? And so, oh, and, and so the only time we ever reference the donor in our, any sort of communication is, is at the end. So it's essentially we create an us and them strategy um, in our language. And again, the whole notion of recognition, the whole notion of philanthropy, of love of humankind to connect us better, this notion of how do we do something greater than we could have done all by ourselves. And so your words really matter. I really strongly encourage you to think about how you use your language um, there's a fabulous trainer out there in the world. Many of you know him. His name is Tom Ahern. We had him at our summit. Um, and he's uh, also coming back to Alaska here soon. Um, and one of the things that he often says is, you know, look through your written materials and look for the word you. And if you can find the word you, and the more you can find the word you, um, the better off your materials um, are actually speaking to donors. So really focusing your language outward towards the donor, with the donor, um, engaging them into that conversation. It's not that you're fabulous and the donor gives money. It's that together you do mission. And that is a, a, a very different kind of language than we often um, hear from organizations. Jason, I just unmuted you. Can you try talking at me? Hi, Lori. Hey, that's, yay, that's great. Well, so Ailey's asking us, um, can you give some examples of celebrating uh, the donor levels? So, um, you know, again, this is so agency specific because it just depends on what what you're looking at. But I have, um, so for example, to go back to this um, here, and we think about how we might we might use that. Um, you know, one of the ways to to think about celebrating your donors on the different levels is is. Oh, I think I see what you're asking me. I think you're asking me, like, how do you, how do you put the donor levels out there and celebrate them that they exist? I got that. Sorry. I missed that question for at the beginning. So I think the idea is that if, you know, one of the ways is to use your existing material. So if, you know, what, if you're on social media, you know, you can uh, flow these out um, and celebrate different donors who are in these categories. 
Um, you can roll them out to your donors. One of the ways that we often see this is if you're going to create levels that you populate them with the donors that you already have and then find ways to let them know that they've just joined this great level and how excited you are about that. And then you kind of, so you kind of do a big rollout by groups. Here you're in this level, yay, that's fantastic. Um, and then show them the whole thing. And then uh, over time, you just get to the point where that just becomes part of your overall communication strategies. But at the beginning, you definitely want to populate your levels and let people know that that's the level that they're in. Um, and you can do that by groups, and you can do that um, both physically or, or through your other channels of communication. So the idea here is that you can do yourself an, or your organization a great favor by writing out your plan. And most of you have been doing this work for a long time, and you may or may not have a plan. And let me just share with you that I think that this is the secret in the sauce to really great fund development, is having a clear process for donor recognition. Don't make assumptions that someone else has it covered. Um, don't, um, you know, kind of when it's everyone's job, it's no one's job is often the, the case in nonprofits. And so really focusing and committing your organization to donor service, which means having a clear process for recognition. So I offer you that by, you know, giving you some seven steps. Um, and they're big steps. This will take you some time. I'm about to show you what a plan might look like. It's not overly complicated, um, but it is, um, it is the ability to um, really think through strategically how are you going to do recognition. I think right when I lost you, I was, I was saying that if you committed your organization to great donor recognition where the donor was the center of that conversation, you would raise more money in the next year even if you did nothing else differently. So um, I cannot under, uh, underestimate the value of a great living plan. So don't just write it and file it in some document, or don't just write it and not share it. This is a great opportunity to engage your whole team, board, staff, volunteers, in this art of, 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 fun, of fund development, of relationship building. It feels so great to do donor recognition. So if you're looking for ways to engage your team, this is a really great process to get them involved here. So I've offered you some steps. I don't have to read them all to you, but I am happy to answer questions that you have along the way. Someone is asking me on chat if um, these will be available, and the answer is yes, and, and, and uh, Jason's answering for you as well. He's going to make them available to you. I'll be giving them to Jason. He'll be putting them out there. Um, and we offer, um, you know, if, and we're happy to, to help you think through these things as well. I, I, I do understand many of you have been you know, are operating kind of on that shoestring space. But remember that the goal in Picklet Give, right, so many of these donors are new to you or they're using Picklet Give to make additional gifts to you. You embracing recognition and really helping them feel that trust, it doesn't help just help you as an organization and the donor. It helps build this whole culture of philanthropy that we're working to create in the state of Alaska. So your contribution to that really makes a huge difference. Um, and again, we have a, this, the one thing I'll say about donor recognition, step number six, you actually have to write it down. It can't just be a great plan in your head. I really want you to keep it on paper. Um, and that can look like a million different things, but I just want to show you a, a, a kind of a, an easy way to show that. So, so here is, um, I'll, I'll show it to you in two ways. So, um, Again, just a, that reminder about what a donor recognition plan is, and I'm showing you one that was made for that I made for as an example for individual donors. I might write a separate or a different plan um, that was for a corporate donor or a foundation donor, but because this is a picklet give class, we're talking about people, uh, individual people. So that's the version I'm showing you here. And again, it incorporates all the things that I've said for the last half an hour, and we're going to incorporate that in. So, um, so thinking about, so I have some. We I start with some rules about what recognition looks like for my for the organization. I set the stage for building that culture that we want to have. So, your plan will look different. Your rules might look different. But here's an example of some of those rules of recognition that you might consider. Um, that our plan is a cumulative plan. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. That recognition is always at the donor's discretion. If they want to be anonymous, you let them be anonymous. If they're doing memorial or honorary gifts, 
then you recognize them with memorials or honorary uh, recognition. If they want their full name with their middle initial, with the you know whatever they want, if they you're, it's at their discretion, which means we actually have to ask them. <laughs> um, that I you know as a rule of thumb, everybody's out of the mailing list unless they ask not to be. Um, again, that you're opting for that anonymous listing if people want that. Um, that we are going to commit ourselves to some key messages that we weave into recognition. And this notion of thank before you bank, that recognition is going to start within 24 hours of receiving a gift. And then, yes, maybe you want to do some special acknowledgments for your pick with gift donors, because this is a really special group of Alaskans who have done something really amazing in terms of their individual participation, but also their collective work here and their commitment. So I often start a recognition plan with just a handful of um, cultural rules that we want to have in our organization. And again, your rules might look different. This is just, a, just an example. And then I would do something that might look like this. And again, I try not to make my plans overly complicated because, of course, we have to live them. <laughs> and it doesn't do any, anyone any good to have a plan that's so complicated that no one will live by. And I just want you to notice, right, so I've got levels, I've got my names, and you know, of course, these are not overly creative because I'm just giving you an example here. Um, and, then, um, and then I've got my plan. And, and again, I noticed that it was cumulative, right? So every donor, you know, our dollar all the way up through, right, everything that happens to the $100 and up below donors happens, we just build, 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 build. So by the time I get to the 10,000 plus donors, they're getting everything that you see on the screen. Um, and again, I can do that. Why we say recognition is hierarchical but not insulting is because the likelihood is that I only have a handful of $10,000 donors plus donors that I need to do all these things with, but I have a lot more donors um, below $100 and below. So thinking about managing my own internal capacity, not, making, not setting my organization up for failure, and lack of follow through, but being willing to commit to things. So the other way that I can ensure that I can commit to this is that I use, again, I weave back into recognition things that we're going to do anyway as an organization. We're already doing them. So I'm just, we're already going to send out a newsletter. We're already going to have mission experiences. We're already going to have um, these, these, these opportunities on our website. So I'm just weaving them through. Is this a perfect example? Absolutely not. And what this example is missing is all the things that make your organization so special um, and what helps the donor feel connected. But my example doesn't have that because I don't know that for you. So again, I really want you to not just take our logo off and put your logo on and own it. I want you to really own it, to really do some great brainstorming with your team and with your donors one of the best ways I know to write this plan is to actually put a, do a little mini focus group, buy a pizza and put four or five donors who have been really committed to you in a room and ask and say to them, we're going to create donor, a donor recognition plan. What would be meaningful to you? What would recognition look like to you? What do you really care about? What excites you about our organization? Why do you give through Pick Like Give? Well, how can we say thank you to, to you to, for doing that? Um, and then I might take a new group of a brand, so I might ha then have another night and another pizza and put a different four or five people in the room who are brand new donors to us. And I might engage them and ask them similar questions. Now their answers will be different than our longtime donor answers. And that's great because that's just going to be more information for us to figure out how to get this right. Um, my experience is that if you can engage them and not do it to them but do it with them, you're going to have a lot more buy-in and they're going to be a lot happier. So thinking about that. You can also buy that pizza for your board members or your staff members and brainstorm with them as well. They'll, they're also donors. They're also giving through Pick, Lick, Give and other ways. And so inviting them to be part of your focus group can also be a wonderful way to create this. Don't just sit at your desk all by yourself and write this list. It won't, um, you, you need team support to get it all done. No one expects one person to do all these things. So again, that donor recognition plan, I, I hope what I'm showing you is it doesn't have to be overly complicated, but it does need to be written down and there does need to be a plan. Um, so questions that you have about 
uh, about any of the planning, the tool itself, or things that I'm uh, are raising as issues. When you're thinking about, you know, just here's some tips as along the way. Again, just kind of reiterating some of the things that I've said. You know, make this easy and and meaningful, um, please. And then make it time limited. You really, the secret, um, the other kind of secret in the sauce to really great fund development work is that, you know, you're never done. So you want to create, you want to create uh, your own time horizon so that you know, right? We get our pick click give list now, and we thank, we do pick click give thank you between now and um, you know, and maybe the beginning of, of November. And um, we're really, you know, we're at, we're on it. We're focused for the next three or four weeks on doing great recognition, and then we're moving on to the next thing. And we're and the next thing is to encourage, start to have conversations with our next group of donors or maybe this group of donors, um, and preparing them for the next cycle of pick click give. Um, and because we know right January 1, we start the clock all over again. So really thinking about how you're doing both recognition and then relationship building before you do the ask that starts again in January. So really thinking about how you do that work, so making it a time-limited experience. Really knowing what your next step, remember that you are moving from recognition back to relationship building before you move to the ask. So really understanding what does that look like in your organization. <laughs> I've mentioned a couple times there, you need to write this plan down. Um, and, and ultimately, I always like to remind organizations that, that the word fun is in the word fundraising. You know, if this is not fun for you, if you don't think that this is, um, that this is worthwhile, that this is something that's worth allocating time, energy, and resource to, um, if you don't think it's fun and you kind of feel like it's a little bit drudgery and you're showing up to it that way, I guarantee the donor doesn't think it's fun either. <laughs> um, and so build that fun in, right? Build that mission fun into the organization. And every organization defines fun a little bit differently, so I don't presume to know what's fun for you. Um, but I do know that um, it's a joyful experience if you and it you need to bring joy to it first before you before generally before others experience that. So my last thought for you is that you know your work is not complete. Your your job is to stay in touch with donors. Again, you've got new donors who pick with give, you've got a, a long time donors who have increased their giving. Um, your job is to stay in touch with them. Make sure that you are continuing to connect with them, not just when you want money, but throughout the whole year. Make sure you're really, again, investing in that relationship. They're more than just ATM machines for you. They're more than just money to you. Um, and again, if you get pick click give donors who are con connecting with you or any donor who's connecting with you, they have questions, they have thoughts, they have concerns, they have questions. There's a lot of donors out there who are, um, you know, they have questions about that 7%, um, that 7% number now. They have questions about whether they're, how their money's being spent. They have, and you know, we have a lot of trust out there with our donors, but the way that we keep their trust is to be really clear with them about what all this stuff means. And ultimately, um, what I'm asking you to do is really commit your organization to great donor service. And um, committing, and not, for some of you, that really means, you know, recommitting the necessary resources to make, um, to make that donor service work in your organization. This doesn't have to cost a lot of money, but it, it does cost time. And, um, and oh, there is a little bit of money. If anyone ever tells you that raising money is free, they are absolutely not telling you the truth. So I do, there, there should be time, the allocation in your budget for time, energy, money um, to make this work, to make all this work. So I encourage you to think about that. So we are offering a whole series in fundraising. This, Jason's been sending out communication to all of you. I hope you'll join us. For those, we promise you, or we hope to promise you, that technology will work better next time. Um, uh, but we are here for you. Uh, Foraker is a resource to you. Jason uh, is a resource to you. Um, our other partners are resources to you. We, we make this program work because we all work together. So anytime we can support you in that, we are happy to do that. Um, Jason, if, if you can talk and you want to say something at the end. I can try. Great. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> well, hi everyone, uh, Lori. This was terrific. I learned a lot, and and I've 
probably seen this a few times and I learned something, so I hope everyone did too. This was terrific. Um, we'll make sure we get this on uh, the website or the YouTube channel here. Um, um, I did get a question um, during this. I got an email from Jesse, who is online as well, um, just asking me uh, for a packet uh, update uh, check and a donor list update, and those were sent out from the United Way this week with a printed list of the donors and email a uh, an email list will be going out next week and so you should be seeing those in your email box sometime next week but um, hopefully you get those and, and use those as quick as you can and uh, have some great connections with donors ASAP